The other element of this innovation, though, is the innovation that you create on top of this platform, because that's what it's all about, enabling you to design better systems faster. We're going to showcase a whole bunch of different applications, from a next generation smart grid system to a future uh, communication system prototype. So let's dive right in and get started. The first area we're going to talk about is in the verification of embedded software. So as these systems get more software centric, verifying that that software is designed correctly is becoming an increasing challenge. So to talk to us more about that challenge and what we're doing to help out, I'd like to welcome Senior Platform Manager Ian Fountain and R&D Group Manager Jared Slocum. What's up, man? Welcome. Welcome, guys. So uh, Ian, tell us about this challenge of embedded software verification. Sure, Eric. Consumer demand and increasing government reg regulations are causing many of the devices we interact with on a daily basis to become significantly more complex. Engineers are finding that they can keep pace with these challenges if they move away from purely mechanical control solutions to the digital domain by adopting a software-based approach that allows them to leverage Moore's law. However, this is causing an exponential growth in the amount of software. If you drove here today, you likely relied on millions of lines of code to get you here safely. It's clear that engineers are going to need to find ways to test earlier, test more efficiently, and test more thoroughly. So what's being done to keep up then? One approach is to create a model of the system, software, and environment. Engineers can then leverage these models during the embedded software development process known as the V-diagram. The basic idea behind the V-diagram is to start with requirements development and design of a control strategy and move on to prototyping, deployment to production hardware, and then through various real-time testing activities such as hardware in the loop testing and test cell validation until the entire system has been designed and tested. The goal is to enable system level testing at each step of the process with a different mixture of real and simulated systems. During the design phase, everything is simulated and each, and each subsequent step of the process, real components replace simulations as they become available. Okay, maybe it would help to give people a kind of real world example of this. Sure. For example, if you were testing engine control software with the hardware in the loop simulation, you would use models of the engine, driver, and road to simulate their interactions with the software. But since the software has been deployed to the actual engine control hardware, the simulations must now execute in real time because you can't slow down or pause the real world. Similar similarly, test cells use physical or mechanical simulations of components for performance and durability testing. Here you can see an example of a dynamometer, which is basically like a treadmill for rotating machines like your car or electric motors. These types of applications require advanced alarming, closed loop control with mode switching, and deterministic stimulus generation to faithfully represent the real world. Now, Jared, you're one of our uh, leaders in R&D working in this space, so why don't you talk a little bit about what you and your team have been working on? Absolutely, Eric. Uh, I work on the Innoverstand R&D team. Out of the box, Veristand provides a configuration-based tool that allows users to create these types of real-time test applications that can be extended using LabVIEW and other software environments. Innoverstand features a stimulus profile tool that allows users to generate deterministic stimulus for the unit under test. With the upcoming release of Innoverstand 2011, we're also happy to announce the release of the Inertia add-on. Wyman technology built upon these stimulus profile generation capabilities in Innoverstand and other features to help turn Innoverstand into a first-class tool for test cell measurement and control. Now, I'm sure everyone's curious about the giant demo that you have beside you, so why don't you tell them a little bit about it? Sure. This is a dynamometer used for performance and durability testing of transmissions. Here in the middle, you have a transmission, and on this side, you have an electric motor, which is used to simulate the engine and the force that it would apply in the transmission. And on the other side, you have another electric motor, which is used to simulate the road. Essentially, these two electric motors are working against one another through the transmission to fully simulate the entire vehicle during driving conditions. To build a test system like this, you need a system with multiple synchronized closed loop controllers capable of switching between various control modes, such as speed and torque. The inertia add-on adds these capabilities and more to Innoverstand. The combination of Innoverstand and inertia allows users to use simulations in their tests to create more flexible test systems. In this example, we're also using Dynacar, a LabVIEW-based model provided by Technalia, which provides real-time simulations of various vehicle subsystems, such as the driveline, differential, engine, and traction with the road. And the engineers at Technalia actually validated these models with this car that they built. Which is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. <laughs> this level of abstraction allows users to think at a system level and how the product will be used, and then allow the simulation to take care of translating that down to the lower level subsystems. 
Okay, so you're using the inertia add-in to uh, do the control, and you're using Dynacar to simulate the rest of the components of the vehicle. Now the fun part, I get to drive it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let me just right. start her up for you right here. There you go. Okay, so I've got paddle shifters. This is what I need in my car. Right. Absolutely. So as Eric's driving, you can see the Veristan monitoring the control signals here, and you can see him changing gears as we're actually interacting with the real transmission under test. That is cool. All right. So for development debugging, being able to interact with a system like this is very useful. But when it comes to applications like durability testing, automation is going to be a requirement. So I'm going to open up here a profile that I've created using the stimulus profile capabilities in NI Veristan to automate a more advanced drive cycle. So as I run this profile, you can see the RPMs will ramp up on the screen here, and you can see it changing gears. That's cool. Nice. So just like we've seen growth in the amount of embedded software, we're also seeing industry trends towards distributed control. In the aerospace industry, you'll find some of the most complex distributed control problems that are at the same time the least tolerant of errors. Let's take a look at how the engineers at Ember Air in Brazil solved these challenges while validating the software on the world's first fully fly-by-wire business class jet. Our Legacy 500 is an executive jet designed with seating configuration for eight to 12 passengers plus two crew members. It uses more than 50 embedded computers, including avionics, flight controls, power plant, displays, among others, for monitoring, control, and entertainment. It is the first aircraft in its class designed with full fly-by-wire controls and side stick. Before the aircraft takes its first flight, we must validate the correct operation of these control systems. An Iron Bird is a ground facility used to perform system integration tests. It's a special prototype of the future aircraft with fault insertion and signal monitoring capabilities that cannot be accomplished in a real aircraft. Some examples are failure propagation tests and, and aircraft maneuverability under two engine failures. It can be used to test the integration of different systems such as power plants, hydraulics, landing gear, flight controls, air conditioning, and avionics, among others. It is designed to allow system engineers to detect problems and incompatibilities during development phase. We use a, a system model with 90,000 parameters and signals to provide an accurate simulation of the aircraft. Using this system, we can find and fix errors before the first test flight. We use NI Veristand to deploy and integrate the aircraft model with 21 real-time PXI systems, so automatic tests can be performed providing electrical, hydraulic, and mechanical interface of the simulation to the aircraft computers. Across this PXI chassis, we have thousands of analog and digital IOs and avionics buses, such as Airing 429, Airing 664, and TTP. The RT PXI systems are synchronized using iRigB and share 70,000 parameters of data at 100 Hz using reflective memory reaching 60 megabytes per second. We chose NI Veristand because of the out of the box functionality it provides, allowing us to get this system up and running more quickly and significantly reducing the system maintenance costs associated. While an Ivory stand provides many of the features necessary for our application, the ability to add functionality using LabVIEW and Test Stand helped us to customize our simulator, creating an environment for automatic test execution. The National Instruments Real-Time Testing Platform and Support Team allowed us to create this system in 30 months, 12 months faster than our previous uh, from scratch approach, including much more automation for test creation, deployment, execution, and report. So today we've seen examples in the... Okay. 
So today we've seen examples in the automotive and aerospace industry, but engineers in any, in any industry can apply these same concepts anytime they need the ability to simulate components that aren't yet ready or that are difficult to reproduce. Guys, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks.